Welcome, Welcome to Trier, Trier, the oldest city in Germany and beautiful Rhineland Falls, perhaps the most underrated city in Germany. We're going to take you around and show you this beautiful town, which uh, has history going back to the Romans, who were here about 200 BC, but the history goes back about 5,000 years before that. It has some beautiful architecture and some great food. We're going to show you the taste and the sights of Trier. Let's dig in. Now, as far as logistics are concerned, if you're coming in for a day trip, if you're driving, there's parking just literally on the other side of the street from the Porta Negra. So you could put into your uh, your GPS or your Apple Maps, Google Maps, whatever, Porta Negra, and it'll bring you right here. And there's parking spots all around. Uh, so great place to park, convenient for a day trip. And it costs four euros to come inside the gate. So highly recommend that. Pay your four euros, come up. It has three levels you can go up and they give you a handy little information booklet uh, with your four euros. So pay your four, four euros and come in and, and tour this beautiful um, UNESCO World Heritage Site. All right, so welcome to Trier and Rhineland Falls and a city that has a stunning nine UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Now we're here for a day trip and that's probably not long enough so we won't get to see all of them. But right now we're in one of them and this is the, the Porta Negra or the Black Gate. And it was one of, the, one of the imperial gates into the city, the only one that's left. And so this is built around uh, 100 AD, I believe. And it was built without using any masonry. It was just giant blocks stacked on top of each other with big metal clamps to hold it in place. And the reason that this gate wasn't destroyed like the rest of them was that in the Middle Ages, a hermit lived here, uh, Simeon. And basically uh, the church, the Catholic church, decided to save it for him and the street outside is Simeonstrasse and so that's why we have the Porta Negra or the Black Gate that's why it was not destroyed and let's go see how many other of the world heritage sites we can visit today and on one day in Trier. All right, so I am at Der Daddy and Trier, and this is supposed to be the best burger in Germany. Um, it's called the Oklahoma Smash, and it was voted the best burger in Germany in 2024. We have some Cajun fries, so we're going to give it a shot and see how the best burger in Germany compares to Germany's I'm used to, the burgers I'm used to in America. Fries are good. All right, so we've got some cheese and some onions. Got the meat overhanging the bun, which is good. All right, so it is very good. It's very delicious. Um, yeah, best burger in Germany. I don't know, I haven't tried them all, but it is good. And I would definitely give it a thumbs up, even in the United States, the home of burgers. So when you're in Trier, come by Dare Daddy. Get yourself a Oklahoma smash. They also brew their own beer. Okay, so I have to give a follow-up. So initially, my mind was already set against this burger place. I'm thinking, you know, I'm an American. I know great burgers. So even the best burger in Germany is not going to impress me. But the more I ate this burger, I got to tell you, the more impressed I got with it. And it is very good. And it compares to any burger you might find in the United States. So the beef is excellent. It's cooked you know, great. It has great sauce on it. The French fries are phenomenal. So let me tell you, American or no, when you're in Trier, come to Dare Daddy and get yourself a burger and you will not be disappointed.
Okay, so I'm underneath the Kaiser Termin or the Imperial Baths of Trier, and these were constructed, the construction began in around 300 AD under Emperor Constantine, who was actually living in Trier at the time. And so these, the intention was for these to be the largest and most intricate baths in the entire Roman Empire. Unfortunately, they were never completed. Uh, Constantine left Trier in, I believe it was 316, and so it was used, used for various other things. For a while, it was basically a, a barracks and a parade ground and among other things. But today, you could come in, it only costs four euros, and you could go underneath and tour this labyrinth of uh, tunnels underneath the ground with these good Roman rocks. And it's very interesting. There's an information booklet, and there's a movie you can see at the uh, entryway to give you more information about the uh, Romans in Trier. Okay, so you don't really realize how big this bath network is until you're down here underneath the ground. And it is a, just a huge maze of different corridors and that, that snake all around through here. So, yeah, um, it doesn't seem that big up above ground, but down below it's really, really quite large. Okay, so look at this giant Roman um, site here at the, the Royal Baths of Trier. And so, and it's really cool and for only four euros it's it's quite a bargain you could come in and, and really uh, have a great time here i could spend all day here but um so in in the late um third century around 293 or so to 290 a.d um uh, the roman empire was split they decided it got too big to manage the different frontiers of the empire so they split it um into basically an eastern and a western half and then those are split into two smaller parts so basically you had like four um four different parts and so trier became the capital of the western part of the roman empire which contained um you know germany up to the rhine river and then basically everything west of of uh germany um so yeah so the power uh the seat of power for the western part of the roman empire was right here in trier and now we've got these great roman sites here to check out and it's truly a great way to spend a beautiful day like we have here today okay so we are at the um the Roman Amphitheater in Trier. And this is another one of the uh, World Heritage Sites. So this amphitheater was built um, between 100 and 200 AD. And it was built right into the, um, the city wall. So basically part of the uh, amphitheater used part of the city wall in, in the construction. Uh, it seated around 20,000 spectators. So it was one of the biggest amphitheaters in the entire Roman Empire and of course it it um, it featured the full gamut of uh, Roman entertainment that we uh, that we think about uh, gladiator duels um, gladiator versus gladiator gladiator versus animal uh, hunting events and there were also um, concerts and different presentations here as well and so you can see most of the where the seats would have been are just like it's just a grassy slope now but we, we're going to go underneath and you can walk around underneath and see what it was like down there where they used to, basically the gladiators used to stay before they came up on the sporting arena so here it is the arena amphitheater floor and i think at least a couple years ago you could actually take gladiator fighting lessons i'm not sure if they still offer those here but you could you could come here and learn how to fight like a gladiator um so maybe you can still do it the eingang the entrance entrance way to get down underneath let's go see what we have down here Sound effects, I like it. So I'm guessing the gladiators would have been fighting right up above us. 
probably trap doors down here where they would pop up where they would keep the animals and stuff pretty cool if you like Roman stuff which I do fascinated by the Roman Empire There we have the amphitheater. 20,000 spectators. Gladiator fights, duels, animal fights. And right up above on the hill, maybe Rome's greatest legacy in Germany, at least this part of Germany. The vineyards over there. The Romans brought grapes and started the wine production here in Germany along the Rhine and Mosul rivers and we are just right off the banks of the Mosul right here All right, so it's afternoon, and so the German tradition that cannot be broken is cake and coffee, a little pick you up in the afternoon. So we have this beautiful latte macchiato and a cappuccino and a carrot nut cake. The coffee's great. They um, they um, um, they roast their own coffee here, and so it's really nice. And the young man inside I spoke with. Um, a really nice guy and so he lived uh, he lived for a year in Canada in Whistler and Vancouver which is very near our place in Seattle so uh, very nice guy and uh, yeah so come here and get some coffee at uh, the Lot coffee factory in Trier all right so this building Behind me, this large, giant building, this is what's known as the Constantine Basilica, or it was the Constantine Throne Room, or the Greeting Room, built for Emperor Constantine in the first century AD, I believe, first or second century AD. And it is the largest intact Roman structure outside of Rome. So right here in Trier, we've got the biggest Roman structure anywhere in the world outside of Rome, and it is quite a giant structure, so come check it out in Trier. Okay, so this is the Liebfrau Church, the Liebfrau Kirche, um, I guess Church of Our Lady, kind of, if you will, and um, this is the oldest Gothic church in Germany, built in the 1200s. And you know, you, when you think of the Gothic style, uh, a lot of people think think of Germany, think they came from Germany, but actually it's French. So when they built the church, they brought in architects from France to help build it. So we brought a church and it's right next to the cathedral in Trier. the oldest Christian church in all of Germany and uh, built by Emperor Constantine so shortly after he legalized Christianity and the Roman Empire his mother who lived here gave up part of her um, living quarters to um, to start construction on the church and so in I believe it was in 243 but I'm not quite certain about the date but anyway to commemorate 20 years on the throne of, as the emperor of the Roman Empire, Constantine started construction of two great churches. One is St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, and the other is this one, also called St. Peter's, St. Peter's Cathedral here in Trier. So there you go, a little bit of history on the Roman Empire between Trier and Rome.
Okay, so one other thing I want to say is that, you know, I've been to a lot of the great churches of Europe, a lot of the great grand cathedrals, and I have to say that this cathedral in Trier is very impressive. Uh, there is some fantastic artwork here, and it is really beautiful. And it's completely free. Sometimes they charge you to go in churches, but here it costs nothing, and it is really impressive. So when you're here, it's definitely worth your time to come in and take a, a walk around inside the cathedral in Trier. Okay, so in here in the cathedral in uh, Trier, um, supposedly they have the holy robe of Jesus Christ back, back there. Um, you can go back there and you can look and they have like a, a golden box that it's in and I guess they bring it out like once a year they show people or whatever I'm not really sure but anyway so like any of the relics that we talk about I mean gotta kind of take it with a grain of salt was it real or not who knows supposedly um, Constantine's mother Helena Saint Helena uh, she was an early and devout convert to Christianity supposedly she did a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and she got the robe there and brought it back here to Trier so who knows, maybe it's true, I don't know. But anyway, they have uh, Jesus's robe here and Trier. All right, so two things that I really love are Roman history of the Ro Roman Empire and Christmas and here in Trier we kill two birds of one stone so we've got some great Roman history here this beautiful Romanesque church um, and also Trier has a very beautiful has more than one actually but very beautiful Christmas markets and right here in the square underneath the cathedral they have a really nice beautiful Christmas market so if you love Christmas if you love Christmas markets come to Trier and check out their beautiful Christmas market in late November through December Okay, so two more of the uh, of the World Heritage Sites here in Trier. You have the Dome, the cathedral behind me, the oldest Christian church in Germany, and right next to it, the uh, Liebfrau Kirche, or the, the Love of Our Lady, um, uh, the oldest Gothic church in Germany. Uh, that was is from the 1200s. The uh, Dome construction started in the 200s, so two very old buildings, very impressive, very beautiful World Heritage Sites. Okay, right outside of the um, cathedral in Trier, we stopped here at this little uh, wine place and had some excellent dry Riesling. It was fantastic. And so it's kind of like a beer garden, uh, except it's a wine garden, I guess. You go inside and you order uh, for yourself and bring it to your table. And they also serve food, which you order inside, but um, I think you could bring your own snacks with you, actually, as long as you buy drinks from them, you could sit out here in this beautiful little area. And then you've got the cathedral to look at. Um, so it's very nice when you're in Trier, stop here, get you a nice glass of Riesling and enjoy the view of the cathedral. All right, so these are the, the Barbara baths, um, and these are the largest Roman baths. Um, I believe they were the second largest Roman baths in the entire Roman Empire, and right here in Trier, and it was uh, a huge facility. And you can come here, and it's totally free. They've got this nice walkway, and you can just walk around here and look at all these ruins uh, of the second largest uh, Roman bath in the, in the Roman Empire, and it's really, cool I mean they have a lot of information stations every uh, 10 meters or so there's a different information station that tells you uh, what it was used for who came here how they heated the water how much water there was so it's very fascinating so when you're in Trier walk down here it's a little bit out of the center of town but uh, really fascinating so come down here and check it out all right so I want to show you something I want you to look at this bridge and you can see this is called the Rome, the the Roman Brook or the, or the Roman Bridge, and um, 
the pedestals were actually put put here were built by the Romans, right? So, you know, and I don't know, 100 AD or whatever. And so those are still the original Roman foundations of this bridge. And look, we've got cars going over today. So 2024, we're still using a bridge support that was built by the Romans, you know, over 2,000 years ago or around 2,000 years ago. That is just, that blows my mind. It's pretty fascinating. All right, so I walked across the, the Roman bridge, the, the Rumor, Rumor Bucca, and um, another World Heritage Site here in uh, Trier. And this river, by the way, if I hadn't told you earlier, this is the, the Mosul, right? So great wine growing river here in uh, Western Germany and uh, on a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a bridge built by the Romans. All right, so just, just think about this here at the Roman Bridge. So when it was built, like horses, chariots, people just walked across it. And now we have cars, automobiles, big trucks. Um, it's amazing what a sturdy structure this was, or is. All right, so we're having a dinner uh, before we head home from Trier, and we're at the Versthaus Zum Glocken, I, I believe is the name of it. And uh, so I'm having Ramsnitzel with French fries, pumice, salad, and Betty's having the Zum Glocken um, salad, which looks excellent. And they have some, some great beer, of course, locally brewed beer. And inside, if you go down below, they, they, they took me down below, and it's it's really cool. They have like a cellar down there. It's about a thousand years old, and told me some of the history of the place. It's really fascinating. So, and I cannot wait to try this. It looks and smells so good. So, first house Zoom Glock, and they also have a hotel, romantic hotel, if you uh, want to spend the night in Trier, and then have a great meal. So, guten appetit. All right, so this schnitzel is fantastic. And schnitzel is like um, a piece of pork that they pound out and make it really thin, and they fry it. It has this mushroom gravy on it, and it is just delicious. And the French fries, um, these are double fried. So they were fried once already, and then they kind of wait, and then when you order them, they fry them again, so they get really crispy and delicious. They are, they are really excellent. It's an excellent meal. So. Yeah, I recommend you stop here. It's really good. Mm. Oh, man. All right, so thanks for joining us today as we hit, the, as we hit Trier on this beautiful day trip. We were able to visit seven out of the nine UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So we have to come back another day to visit the other two. We had some great food. We had some delicious drinks. We just enjoyed this beautiful city. We walked, I think, around 22,000 steps between eight to nine miles. So we walked a lot, we saw a lot, we ate a lot, and it was a great day. So thanks for joining us. Hope you liked this video. If you do, be sure to hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button, uh, leave us a comment, let us know where your favorite place to visit is in Germany. Have you been to Trier? If you have, let us know, and make sure you subscribe to our channel. And uh, join us and, uh, Wait till we go next week. Follow us next week and see where we go. Have a great day.